My name is Roland Arms and I am a consultant in diving and hyperbaric medicine. I have been asked to speak to you about the signs and symptoms of decompression illness. First, I'd like to address some terminology because this can be confusing. Decompression illness can be split into two groups of conditions. Decompression sickness, which is commonly known as the bends, and arterial gas embolism. And I'll describe both of these in detail in a moment. There are another group of conditions that can affect divers related to what is called barotrauma. So that is injury caused to divers by changes in pressure. And some symptoms that will present after a dive lead to a diagnosis of barotrauma. But if we go back to decompression sickness, the bends, and arterial gas embolism first, it's important to understand the timing of onset of a diver's symptoms. If symptoms present in a very short space of time after a diver has surfaced from their last dive, let's say within five to 10 minutes, then there is likely to be a component of arterial gas embolism affecting that diver. Even if there is no arterial gas embolism, then decompression sickness symptoms can present as early as 20 minutes after surfacing from their last dive, or the presentation may be delayed until up to three days after the dive very rarely it is possible to see decompression sickness present even later than that. The symptoms of arterial gas embolism and decompression sickness do overlap. But if we go back to the beginning and address barotrauma first of all, chest pain and shortness of breath are very uncommon features of the bends, decompression sickness, or arterial gas embolism and are much more likely to represent either an injury that has occurred to the diver whilst diving or specifically be symptoms of barotrauma. So that is a very important distinction to make. If we now consider the symptoms that may represent arterial gas embolism or decompression sickness, the bends, I'll break them down into related clusters of symptoms. So divers may experience undue tiredness, lethargy, poor appetite, and just generally not feel very well. And those are described as constitutional symptoms of decompression sickness or arterial gas embolism. We may see a diver present with joint pain, which is quite common and often as an isolated symptom, but can be related to others. Divers may present with an unusual rash, which may in addition be associated with skin edema and swelling. And that is a common presentation of decompression sickness. And then we have a cluster of neurological symptoms. So a diver may present with weakness, numbness, tingling, or other subjective neurological symptoms. And all of these would point towards a neurological episode of decompression sickness or the bends. Symptoms of great significance to us are what we call girdle pain, when a diver experiences pain radiating around both from the back, around both sides of their body, or indeed back pain. Those might be cardinal symptoms of a spinal decompression sickness or bend. And that is really important for us to understand. Another group of symptoms that divers may get relate to poor balance. So they may be unable to stand or they may have been able to walk after the dive, but their balance may deteriorate. Along with that, they may experience dizziness, possibly even true vertigo, and they may be very nauseated or indeed have vomited. All of those symptoms would suggest the development of an element of a vestibular episode of decompression sickness or the bends. Loss of consciousness, outright cardiovascular collapse, and unilateral arm and leg weakness are uncommon presentations but the differential diagnosis for those would be an arterial gas embolism if those symptoms arose very quickly after a diver surfaced. But we also have to consider that divers may become, become unwell for other reasons whilst diving that are unrelated to pressure changes and breathing compressed gas. By this, I mean that a diver may experience a heart attack, a stroke, subarachnoid hemorrhage, or have some other significant medical event whilst diving that may result in the symptoms that present thereafter. We also have to consider that divers can become injured physically whilst diving. So if a diver presents after a dive with musculoskeletal pain, numbness in a limb or backache, then 
these symptoms may relate to musculoskeletal injury that has occurred whilst they've been diving, and they may remember that injury happening. But we have to be cautious of these symptoms, especially if it relates to back pain or girdle pain or significant major joint pain, because the differential diagnosis for those is a significant episode of decompression sickness.